launch mode activated. Ready to launch. Okay, now I've got launch mode activated. So when I arm the quad and then I push the pitch stick all the way forward, the quad should pitch forward to its maximum angle, which I've preset in Betaflight. But watch what happens without me touching the pitch stick and just arming the quad. So what's up with launch control, right? Good day. What you just saw is not how launch control was supposed to work. My quad should not have pitched forward uncommanded as soon as I armed it. I hadn't used launch control in a while, and I first thought since I updated my Betaflight version since the last time I used it, that maybe there was a change to how launch control worked. So I went through a bunch of the Betaflight version release notes, and I didn't find any changes to launch control. My next step was to ask if any changes were made to launch control that didn't make the release notes. The Betaflight dev assured me no changes had been made and suggested I look at my channel outputs as a possible solution. This hadn't occurred to me since I've always just calibrated my sticks and channels once and then forgot about them. That was my mistake. Today I'm going to show you how not to make the same mistake I did. I'm going to demonstrate for you how to calibrate your control channel Ooh. endpoints and center values using both Betaflight and OpenTX and how to use extended Ooh. limits if necessary to get the proper calibration. Sound good? Then make sure to hit that thumbs up button below and subscribe to your TMAC FPV channel. Your home for your journey to better FPV fun, flights, and racing stuff. Of course, the first thing we want to do before we even get into calibrating our channel endpoints is to ensure our gimbals are calibrated as shown at time mark 1643 of this video. Radio Master TX16S setup and customization. Now for this video, I'll be using my Radio Master TX16S. However, everything I do is basically the same for any transmitter running OpenTX firmware. Next, it's probably a good idea to make sure each of these four trim tabs are centered initially to make sure that they don't inadvertently affect your channel center and endpoints calibrations. There are a few ways to check to see if they're centered. First of all, if you have this trims option toggled on, on your telemetry page, you'll visually see whether or not they're centered by looking at the red dot along these horizontal and vertical bars. Secondly, if they're not centered and you want to center them, you can be notified by an audible alarm when they do become centered. Trim center. Lastly, I've created a custom soundtrack which plays as a reminder and notifies me once that my trims are not centered. Check trims for centering. If you're interested in how to do that, I've got screenshots of the simple logical switches and special functions I've created for that purpose displayed here on the screen, and you can also check out my custom sounds video through a link in the video description below. Then with your transmitter on, connect your quadcopter to Betaflight, and with your props off, power your quad with a flight battery if needed for your receiver to be active. Go to the Receiver tab in Betaflight. These first four channels over here, shown in your Receivers tab, are your control channels. I have my control channels set up as Roll, Pitch, Throttle, and Yaw, or AETR, for Aileron, Elevator, Throttle, and Rudder. So when you move your transmitter sticks, you should see the corresponding channel bar move for that particular stick movement. For each of these channels, when the stick is in its center position, you want this number here to be at 1500, not 1535. When it's at its minimum position, you want this number to be at 1000. And when the stick is at its maximum position, you want this number to be at 2000. After you've calibrated your transmitter sticks, the first thing you want to do is center them and get your PPM center value displayed here for each channel at 1500. To do that, we need to go to our channel outputs page. And for each channel that's not displaying 1500, when the sticks are at their center position, we scroll down to that channel. And in this case, I'll do my pitch channel, which is channel two. Press enter to edit that channel and scroll over to this last column of numbers, which is your PPM center column, as indicated here in the upper right on the outputs page of the TX-16S. 
To edit this number, we press Enter. And then we use our scroll bar to scroll left to reduce this number or scroll right to increase it as necessary while we're watching the value displayed on the channel bar here in your Betaflight receiver tab. We want to get this value down to 1500 when the stick is at its center position. So we're going to scroll left while we're watching that bar and get that value down to 1500. Once we're there, we select Enter again, and then return on our transmitter. And we do the same thing for each channel that isn't displaying a center value of 1500 in Betaflight. So let's go ahead and do that for our yaw. That would be channel 4. Select Enter, scroll over to PPM Center, and this time we want to increase the number to 1500. Right there. And we press Enter again. Return. And now our roll, pitch, and yaw center values are at 1500. When we center the throttle stick, it's at 1500 also. So we're good to go there. Now that our center values have been calculated, let's take a look at our endpoints. We want our minimums to be at 1000 and our maximums to be at 2000. There are a couple ways of going about doing this, and I'm going to show you the easiest way that works for me without using the CLI. This method is through the channel outputs page, very similar to what we did with our PPM center values. To determine our minimum value for each of our control channels, we hold our transmitter stick at its minimum position for that channel and observe what value we have in the beta flight receiver tab for that channel. If it's not at 1000, such as I have here with the pitch channel, we simply scroll over to the second column of numbers, which is associated with our minimum value as indicated in the upper right hand corner of the outputs page of our RadioMaster TX16S. Then we adjust this value by clicking enter and scrolling left to reduce it or to the right to increase it. In this case, since our value on our Betaflight receivers tab is 1030 when the stick is in the minimum position, we want to decrease it to 1000. So I'm going to scroll left and we watch the number on the Betaflight receiver tab for the pitch channel reduce to, until it gets to 1000. And there are a few clicks of the scroll bar that allow it to have a value of 1000. There's one click, two, three. So I've got three clicks that allow the value to be at 1000 in the Betaflight receiver tab. And I'll just use the first one since we're dealing with a minimum here. Once it's at 1000, we click enter. And now when we move our stick to its minimum position, we're at 1,000. And we do that for each of our control channels. Here we see our roll is at 988 in the Betaflight Receivers tab. So let's go ahead and change that. Roll is our aileron channel, which is channel 1. And we scroll over here to the second column of numbers, which is depicted by min in the upper right-hand corner of our outputs page. And we want to increase that to 1,000. So we click Enter, and we want to scroll it right until we get to 1,000. That should do it. Click Enter. And now when we move the stick to its minimum position for roll, we're at 1,000. <laughs> Similarly, to get our maximum values at 2,000, we hold our transmitter stick at its maximum position for that channel and observe what value we have in the Betaflight receiver tab for the channel. In this case, our pitch maximum value is 2011. We want to reduce that to 2000. So this time we're going to scroll over to the third column of numbers. And I'm doing our pitch channel here. And that will be our maximum value as depicted by the word max in our outputs page of our RadioMaster TX16S. So when our pitch stick is moved to its max position, our value in the Betaflight receiver tab is 2011. We want that to be 2000. So that means I need to reduce this number 100 by using the scroll bar to the left. So let's go ahead and press Enter here. Put our stick at its maximum position. And we want to reduce that to 2000. And it appears that we can go from 1999 to 2001. Since this is a max value, I'm going to go with 2001 here and press Enter. 
So when our stick is at its maximum position now, we're at 2001, which is pretty darn close to 2000. And that should work for us. What about roll? Roll's at 1999. What we can do is go to our roll channel, which is channel one for aileron, press enter, scroll over here to the max column. And with our roll stick maxed out to the right, let's just see if we can get to 2000. 2001, that's good. We'll go with that. Rolls at 2001. What about yaw? Yaw min is at 1024. We want that to be at 1000. Yaw is channel four for rudder. So we want to go to our second column for minimum, press enter, hold our stick over to the minimum value and decrease that to 1000. Right there. Press enter. Move our stick to the minimum position. It's now at 1000. What about maximum? It's at 2008. Let's go ahead and move that over. And we want to decrease that number until our maximum yaw value is at 2000. And we'll go with 2001 in this case. There can be situations, however, when this number over here you need to increase this past 100 in order to get a maximum value of 2000 on your Betaflight receiver tab channel, and it won't go past 100. So what do we do then? Well, that's easy. We just return out of here to our model setup page and scroll down to extended limits. And this extended limits option you just want to press enter and toggle that on. Press return, and now it's toggled on, which means we can go back to our channel outputs page, and now we can change these numbers past 100 if we want to on either side to get these values in your Betaflight receiver tab at 1,000 and 2,000 if necessary, by going past minus 100 or plus 100 in those two columns. So after we do all that, we now have our mid-stick values at 1,500, our minimums at 1,000, and our maximums at 2,000. If you see your numbers twitching or flickering around the center value on your channels, no worries. Just take note of by how much they're changing. Let's say that they're changing between 1498 and 1500. That would be changing by two. We'll add one or two to that. Let's just add one to say three. And then you put that number over here in RC dead band. So we'll put the value three here. Or if it happens to be on your yaw channel, put it over here under yaw dead band. We'll just do both for now. Remember to click save down here in the lower right hand corner of your screen. And it shows saved up here. That's how you calibrate your channel endpoints, PPM center, and use extended limits with both Betaflight and OPTX. Now that you've got your gimbals and channel endpoints and centers calibrated properly, you shouldn't experience any unexpected, uncommanded movement when you fly. Thanks for your time. I'll see you next video. Clear skies, friend.